Hi there, this is GIS Nigeria coming up on the program. On even scale, we explore how traditional royal practices marginalize female regions in Ondo and Ekiti communities. Also, infant mortality. Teenage moms in Kenya get affordable care and support to deal with stigma. And I'm Victoria Biola Ajayi. Check me out. The accountant advocating for more women in boardrooms across Africa. Welcome to GIST Nigeria from the BBC and Channels Television, where we bring you stories making the rounds on social media. I am Annetta Felix. Let's start today's program with a torchlight on a popular tradition in southwest Nigeria. After the passing of a king, women are sometimes brought in as interim heads or regents to provide leadership pending when a substantive king is enthroned. Arguably, Ondo and Ikiti states have the highest number of such female regions. But why don't they become substantive rulers, considering that some of the regions outspend the time expected of them in their acting roles? What are some of the biases they face and how they're dealing with them? What happens to these women after they leave office? Just Nigeria's Wali Fakile has been finding out. <laughs> A tradition so fascinating, it's almost a fantasy. Adorned and addressed like men, men of authority and affluence. But like a flash in the pan, their claim to the throne seem fleeting. And behind all the spectacle and splendor are untold stories, stories of sacrifice. Southwest Nigeria is predominantly and historically occupied by the Yorubas. The monarchical system of governance is a strong part of the cultural identity here. And though the constitution has no role for these kings, they are widely respected as spiritual and cultural heads of their communities. These important roles highlight why a vacant throne is almost unthinkable amongst the Yorubas. When a king passes on under Yoruba traditional rule, Royal councils or a member of the monarch's cabinet manages the vacant throne until a new king is installed. But in some cases, tradition requires that a temporary ruler is sworn in to oversee the community until a king is enthroned. These short-term rulers, known as regents, are mostly women and in rare cases, men. Female regents are widespread in Ondo and Ikiti states. Both states share numerous borders and were only separated in 1996 when Ikiti state was created out of the old Ondo states. The regents here are usually daughters or close female relatives of the king who just passed on. It's a practice I find intriguing since I met a former female regent years ago. Ibule Shoro a community of about 10,000 residents in Ondo State is nestled between Akure, the state capital, and Ilaramoki in the federal local government area. The traditional ruler here is a female regent who assumed office less than three years ago when her father passed on. Now 27 years old, she sees the temporal nature of regency as a mixed bag. As a regent, if you are not married, you can't get married. If you are married, you can't even get pregnant. So, uh, as a woman who wants to pursue your life with progress, you would be eager to want to leave the position. So that alone, it's 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 a form of bias. But that is uh, that has been institutionalized with a practice. And what are some of the limitations um, that come with the regency, your regency? In this community, a regent is not allowed to install a chief, or even demote or or remove a chief. So we can only suspend. Then, as a regent, there are certain meetings 
that I do not attend because I am a regent that is mainly for the male orbs. So, so imagine there are things that are discussed in such kind of meetings for the progress of communities that the regent is not present. Before leaving the community, I meet up with the high-ranking chief to find out why the regent cannot be made substantive king, having served for almost three years. And they cannot be made a substantive king because, uh, you know, we don't normally have a, a female king in Yoruba land. If the thing drags on, the region cannot be, it cannot be, it cannot continue like that. For example, the problem we're having now, our region, she, uh, she has spent about three or four, about three years on throne now. It's because of the problem of the selection of a king. The region here in Ibule Shoro is vibrant and well respected by her community. But a place as a royalty is rooted in a custom that favors men in the long run. What I've gathered in Ibule Shoro is not peculiar. The limitations, biases, and prolonged real tussles that keep a regent in office with no end in sight or mirrored in other kingdoms. To stop this enforced stay in office, neighboring Ikiti State enacted the regency law in 2015. The law states that a regent must not be on the throne for more than six months, although a clause in the law says the governor reserves the right to determine the duration of any regency in the state. My next stop is in Ogotun, one of three major towns that make up the southwest local government area of Ikiti State. The sitting monarch here is also a regent. After presiding over our community for six months, she is close to the expiration of her tenure as a substantive king has been selected. I've come to her palace to find out what she thinks about the rules and limitations of her office. The married mother of one tells me these rules, including celibacy, are fair. If there are more rules for the regent, that would be because she's going to be there for a limited time. And that's why she is there. The custom is well preserved. On the other hand, somebody is going to be there for the rest of his life. In a way to help the person that will be there for the rest of his life and to make it easier for him, it would be better to let the person have lesser rules. I also catch up with the Prime Minister of the community who tells me regents do not get the same pay are substantive kings. Under the Ekiti State Regency Law, a regent salary is slashed into two. She is paid one half for six months. At the expiration of the six months, recognized by the government, her pay stops even if she is still on the throne. The experience of the interim ruler here in Ogotun Ekiti is that of preservation and acceptance of the custom the way it is. But for non residents like me, this custom is interesting and a bit surprising. I'm now heading back to Ndo State, Akoko Southeast precisely. Here, I want to meet the regent of Iboropa. A substantive king has been installed in her township, but she says she won't vacate office as tradition still recognizes her. With a strong social media presence and being the first regent here, she tells me she wants to change the tradition. Now 23, she became a regent at the age of 16. This is the point where history is made. Because I feel like I have to rewrite it, rewrite the history. Because I have, I have had regents who are not doing so well. Who have been, you know, they've, they've, they've been cast aside, they've become cast away. And since I'm the first, and I think that what I can stop now, the problems I face now, I will try that I can to make sure that the people that will come after me, who that will emerge as regents in this community after me, would not face such problems anymore. So what next for you now, since a substantive king has been installed in your community? Knowing that I gave, I gave the best six years of my life to the community, serving the people and making sure to do right by them, I feel like the government will actually appreciate the efforts that I'm putting in to ensure that there's peace, there's stability. So, and if the government can't do that and they can't guarantee that, I think it should be scraped because there's no point in... I've now interacted with three regions 
who have access to the paraphernalia of their offices at varying capacities. But what really becomes of regents who are no longer in any way associated with their office aside the title? To get answers to this question, I return to Ikiti State in his own local government area. Princess Adebo Adenike was the regent of Ise from 1999 to 2001. She had wanted to be a nurse, but several years down the line, she now runs this petty store to support herself and her two children. She tells me she feels abandoned. Since I left office, I have not received any compensation or pay from the government. I served as a regent and in that capacity, I was the leader of my community. But right now, it's as if I never served. So when you look back, do you have any regrets whatsoever um, being the regent of this community? I gave birth to a set of twins shortly after becoming the regent here. I lost one of the babies. And after a while, my ex-husband started acting strange. His friends and relatives told him to be afraid of me. He eventually abandoned me and the children to get married to two other women. He has not contacted me ever since. I can't remarry because men are afraid of me. What I've just heard is not just compelling. It speaks to the very heart of how the pioneers of this custom might not have considered the impact it would have on these women while trying to preserve their tradition and the throne. We put these concerns to the Bureau of Chieftaincy Affairs in Ikiti State. He or she is acting in the absence of a number. So with that number, there is nothing. There is nothing government has to do with a, a former regent. Back in Ondo State, we also raised the same concerns with the Ministry of Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs. A particular region has its own life already. Is either a high chief or a female side of a number who is supposed to be a wife somewhere. So they have their own normal life they are living. So we don't have anything to do with them immediately after their regency. Beyond the challenges associated with regency, there is another category of female monarchs that are mostly unknown. They are called female kings. Professor Fatai Olashupo has been researching these kings for more than 20 years. This tradition is common to a kitty and on those states, where you have male king, female king, male palace, female palace. There is a role they play when they want to enthrone male king. Their advice is sought. They have a role they play. He also tells me the tradition of having substantive female kings is not alien to Yoruba culture. When I took female kings from Ekiti state in particular to Orni, when he came on board, when I took them to, to him, he confirmed this in their presence. That, that if I also once had female or knee. And when I got to Alafi, what he even did was he took the history of Yoruba, written by Samuel Johnson, where he talked about the only female Alafi of Oyo, Orun Poto. Again, Alafi claims it is one, but literature, literature claims they are more than one too. My biggest takeaway from this experience is that, despite the system being rigged against female monarchs, the regions I interacted with have risen above challenges to do well by their people. Historically too, research has shown there is nothing in Yoruba tradition that says women cannot be substantive kings. Wali Fakile, Chist, Nigeria. The beautiful thing about tradition is that it changes. Join this conversation on Twitter at Gist Nigeria TV and let's hear your views. Still to come on Gist Nigeria. Teenage mothers in Kenya get support to raise their kids. We'll bring you this story and more after the break. Stay with us.